this mission is called Ruka Nak Valhalla. This mission, Company of the Bear Yager, Alpine Infantry, have to capture the bridge leading into Hama. And I also have to secure the high rise buildings adjacent to the bridge. In this preview, I did, in this walkthrough rather, I decided uh, not to record the setup phase because um, I really, it really took a lot of time. Um, I had to very carefully scan the terrain and consider every approach. So, yeah, so I decided not to record it. Um, the initial objective, the initial phase of this operation is going to be based around capturing the area south of the river, which is said to be occupied by uh, a small but fanatical group of Fedayeen. And they're centered around a mosque um, in the center, the little dome building there. They're also likely to be uh, manning the offices of the mosque. My plan to capture that area um, is going to consist of maneuvering a rifle platoon around the east, um, assaulting it from the southeast, um, and then once that platoon's in position, then I was going to assault the mosque area with a, a platoon of Panther Pioneer, regular pioneers. So one of the preparatory bombardments was a smoke screen. The primary use of that smoke screen was to conceal the pioneers getting into position. And they're they're right next to that uh, big building. Uh, secondary use of that smoke screen was to conceal the maneuver platoon. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting up the MG3 um, in Overwatch. And it's actually a pretty good call because as soon as uh, that platoon begins to maneuver, they're fired upon by a dishka. I'm going to suppress the dishka with, um, actually that's a PKM. I'm going to suppress the PKM with uh, the, the platoon machine gun team. Then I'm going to maneuver the rest of the platoon on task and just assault the uh, offices to the east of the mosque. Um, what I spotted a few moments ago, uh, which I didn't really have the time to speak to, I spotted a ZU-23 technical, and that represents a extremely high threat to my platoon. Um, ZU-23 struck at close ranges like this. Um, one burst of auto cannon fire can wipe out the entire section. And it's an extremely dangerous weapon. So we're taking small arms fire from the uh, apartments on the northeast side of the river. The smoke screen is nearly is nearly uh, off. I was planning on bounding, you know, I was planning on maneuvering the platoon um, across the road and into Overwalk and into that little. Um, Courtyard area there, so fire from their attack. But now I spot um, another Z23 down the highway by the clock tower, and that's going to effectively pin down my position until, or I should say, it's going to delay my uh, assault of the south side of the river until those vehicles are knocked out. I'm going to use uh, 120 millimeter mortars knock them out. Meanwhile, um, what what fire missions are going on in the background right now is uh, this is the initial preparatory fire missions to suppress uh, potential OPs. While that smoke screen is still up, I'm going to take advantage of it and push my pioneers up. I suspect that the buildings 
you know, east of the mosque, i.e. the offices, are probably going to be manned, and that's going to be the critical um, position for this entire mission, is going to be occupying the, the offices east of the mosque. So, in order to affect the assault of the mosque area, I'm also going to be moving a uh, second platoon onto, uh, onto the western flank. I don't expect much enemy contact over there. They're going to pincer, um, basically maneuver from both sides onto the area, hopefully get 360 degree fire superiority, and then assault. Now, the pioneers are pushed up, they're not in contact. So what I'm going to do here is I wanted to sneak the pioneers up, you know, onto the up onto a higher floor. I was going to just sneak them up, um, but what happens is that they fucking they crawl on the rooftop to get to the next building, and that's that's a common feature I notice with all of these buildings in this entire level is that they have no oh, yeah, interconnecting whatsoever. Ended. So, in order to go to the next block of apartments, you have to go on the rooftop for most of the buildings, and some of them have buildings at the base of the uh, compound, on the compound. So, that's pretty stupid and unrealistic, but whatever. Now, these really tall buildings with the balconies here that I was just looking at on the east, um, those would appear superficially to be great overwatch positions, but as I brought up in my previous video, um, balconies are to be avoided at all costs because the game doesn't, um, the AI basically will go onto the balcony rather than stamp down the windows, and that greatly exposes them to enemy fire, especially against, uh, high explosives, like uh, RPG-29s, RPG-7s, SPGs, etc. So, that basically, you know, I deeply considered, you know, going into Overwatch there, that was one of my primary alternative plans, but it's just so dangerous to go on balconies that I decided against it. So I'm about 150 meters away from the mosque right now, at least on the western flank. Right now I'm just going into the buildings to see, um, you know, where the doors are, if I'm going to have line of sight on the target buildings. Um, and I'm going to split up the sections into four-man fire teams. The reason for that is, is that I fear the killing power of RPGs at close range. If you have your entire section, you know, bunched up and by a window or two windows, you can lose three or four guys in a matter of seconds from well-aimed RPG. And these guys that are going to be defending these compounds are, well, they're, they have nothing to lose and they're sort of veterans of the campaign. And now what I'm doing is I'm canceling those orders because I realized that one of the target buildings um, by the mosque that is occupied by enemy is going to have a clear line of sight and is going to be able to fire down the road and mow down my moving forces. So before I can move that platoon, I have to suppress those buildings. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to blow down the wall the area using the weasel and then uh, I'm also going to be using the company manned element and an MG3 team to suppress that content and suppress those buildings and hopefully uh, hopefully force the enemy to respond and give away his position.
So the first fire mission I did on the C-23 on the west on the northwestern bank uh, missed because the smoke screen obscured the observer's vision um, when he, you know, when he was calling the fire mission. Accordingly, I'm gonna have to call the fire mission back in, and that's gonna further delay the assaults on offices east of the mosque. Overwatching pioneers. Um, otherwise, I'd be I'd draw the ZU's fire and probably take heavy casualties. So now that that building is suppressed, now I can finally maneuver this platoon on the west here. I can maneuver this platoon into uh, a battle position and hopefully get eyes and get Overwatch on the target buildings. So, now I hear a burst of AK fire, and I'm thinking it's coming from the, uh, down the center. But no, it's actually coming from the offices, and the enemy is firing at my retarded pioneers that decided to crawl across the rooftop rather than take a more safe route. And unfortunately, the rest of the Pioneer Platoon can't really assist them because they would be fired upon by the ZUs, both of which are still active. Once, and so there, that team of Pioneers is going to take casualties and there's nothing I can do about it. We can't support them with fire. Otherwise, I'll draw the seeds to my position. But yeah, that's one of the sort of annoying things about this mission is that you have to check every single building to make sure that it has interconnecting doors and windows and whatnot. Aggravating. So, the ZU at the end of the highway was just knocked out by artillery. So now I can maneuver this platoon on the southeast here. And they're probably going to take heavy fire when they bound into the open. There's probably some heavy machine guns sighted on the highway. In fact, I know there is because that Dishka fired on me before. Uh, so, I'm going to redeploy the MP3 into Overwatch, and the MP3 is going to be used to suppress any use of weapons that fire in the sections. Meanwhile, the Pioneers and uh, one section of uh, the tree of the platoon are going to be used to fire the fire. Now, all hell's breaking loose. There's small arms erupting from all of the buildings, and it's a little premature. Or I should say my attack's a little premature because the platoon that's maneuvering from the west still has not set up and they're gonna they're not in Overwatch yet so they can't really support the attack. Try to spread out the platoon as much as possible. You know, try to make the largest frontage possible. So we're we're getting engaged by uh, platoon minus sized enemy force. At least two to three sections are in these buildings. They're firing RPGs across. Uh, it's just all around nasty. And there's a pretty nasty firefight occurring. Uh, my task right now is to attain fire superiority. Once fire superiority is achieved, then I will assault the combat. Right now, uh, there is one area which is exposed uh, for my attack, and that is the 
mosque area itself, those buildings can fire upon my forces that are going to be maneuvering. So I'm going to rely on those pioneers to suppress any contacts. And um, the platoon on the west has now made contact. I made contact with the enemy team in one of the buildings surrounding the mosque. My uh, initial reaction is to, you know, roll the weasel up and suppress those buildings. But, um, it's pretty difficult to do so with people on the site and people on the streets. Rocket fire! Rocket fire! End it! So we're taking fire, fire from across... Across the river. Uh, there's... looks like a full-size section in uh, one of these apartment buildings. The SOPs and the ROEs state that I'm not really allowed to destroy civilian buildings, but um, it's going to be pretty difficult to destroy that section just with uh, small arms. <coughs> so I'm going to try to take it out with the Panzer Outfits of 2000. Now there's an enemy. There's an enemy across the bridge, and those buildings open the fire on my forces now as well. Just have to get the firefight on our hands. And I'm taking casualties. You know, can't really be avoided because I can't. The only way I can avoid taking casualties is if I could roll the weasels up and suppress the building before I attack. But I can't do that because the enemy has a lot of everywhere, not to mention the use and all sorts of nasty shit, so... So we're still trying to achieve fire superiority here on the eastern flank. team fires into a building and kills another pioneer. Unfortunately, the only thing we can really do about this is just try to exchange small arms. I can't move the weasels to support, so this is basically just, you know, who's more badass, basically. This is a more badass contest, basically. Can take the most shots, and get, you know, etc. So the Panzer Pioneers are going to begin to assault the center, the mosque complex. I'm going to use uh, explosive charges to blow down the wall surrounding the complex, and then uh, assault the building itself. The defenders are. Distracted right now, they're engaging the maneuver platoons on either side. It's, it's quite clear now that the city has come to life, so to speak. Um, there's numerous contacts um, firing upon my forces from all directions. Zero and mortars on me. I'm going to start to bound the squad one by one across the open.
So now what I'm doing is I'm just taking short bounds using uh, the fire teams of the restaurant once you um, taking short bounds per fire team to uh, maneuver on and uh, close the distance with the enemy forces in the boss compounds. Meanwhile, um, another platoon has arrived, plus another platoon of uh, pioneers and two weasels, the tow weasels. This platoon has a uh, automatic grenade launcher, producer weapon, but organic to it, so I'm going to go ahead and put that up on the rooftop and get it to overwatch for some direct fire support. They'll help attain fire superiority. Uh, these formations are fresh and they're at full strength. So I'm going to be using these to actually cross the river after uh, the two platoons that are currently maneuvering. Um, after they secure some base of fire uh, positions on the uh, river mouth. For now though, they're just going to be put into overwatch and a relatively safe Overwatch positions. There we have it. Spotting rounds are landing. Spotting rounds are landing by the offices, meaning that the Syrians are zeroing us in. Need to get those infantry out of that open field quickly. Just gonna run across. I'm gonna rely upon the overwatching elements to suppress the contacts that are in our And, you know, 
it's not it's not taking as many casualties as I'd like. So the pioneers are continuing to secure the mosque area. The rest of the Eastern Peninsula is uh, being put into Overwatch on the edge of the river. This will provide added security as I prepare to cross the river and I also continue to secure and occupy the boss in the center. And on the north side of the river, you can see that there's a regular force running from building to building and taking pot shots at my forces. Also getting pinned down and destroyed. Abgefeuert. Come in. Abgefeuert. Ende. Achtung! Aufschlag! Come in. Aufschlag. Ende. south side of the river and effectively engaging my overwatching forces. The uh, reinforcing platoon of pioneers just took a few casualties from my well-guided mortar shot. Ah, uh, yes. Now the arrival of the Syrian Special Forces. Now this came as a surprise, mainly because uh, they're not mentioned in the briefing, I don't think. Definitely want to kill these guys before they get you know, trenched in the buildings. The main reason why I want to kill them as quickly as possible is because they bring with them, you know, the seven games of effective RPG 29. It's sort of a death ray that can kill an entire section in one shot. It's basically a tow missile, except it's man portable. Forces reinforcements. I'm going to try to interdict them with uh, artillery fire and also with uh, direct fire from the Overwatch guns. I'm 
fought a headquarters section in the open and massacred them. Then. I think perhaps the, the hardest thing about this mission is that, um, you know, I don't have access to the um, trucks that traditionally come with these forces. And uh, the consequence of that is that I don't have nearly as much 40 millimeter grenades and I don't have any extra Panzerfaust in the one per section. If the trucks were here, I would have moved up the Panzer Faust, Panzer Faust, I should say, and that would have provided me a very reliable direct fire support weapon. Now, of course, I do have the weasels, but I can't use them, so right now I don't really have a direct fire support weapon, other than the uh, automatic grenade launcher. If I were to move these weasels out into the open, they'd probably be able to by uh, the Syrians with an RPG-29. Feuerauftrag beendet. Ende. Long story short, uh, not having access to the Panzerfaust rounds definitely, you know, drastically increases the challenge and the difficulty of these missions. Because those enemy squads that were firing and shooting RPGs into, into my uh, fighting positions. I could have responded to them with accurate Panzerfaust fire and probably killed the attackers. But because I, don't, yeah, because I only have one Panzerfaust per section, I try to ration them. I don't know if there's going to be other vehicles, other CUs are on the map. And you definitely want to have a Panzerfaust when you need it. If there is a ZU truck and uh, zeroing in on you, you want to knock it out very quickly. And the only way to do that with the rifle section is with the Panzerfaust. So the enemy is still in the open. Partially, he's still trying to redirect and shift all his forces to create a perfect kill zone. Meanwhile, the assembly area is getting shelled. Wolf keeps, which I uh, originally, which I dismounted early in the mission, uh, are getting you know bombarded. I lost one of them.
gonna try to use one of the tail weasels here. Make me cut to the risk. Like exposing it to fire. It's only a very slim bar to fire the toe, so I am worried that it might do exactly that and hit the building. So that's enough toe for now. Um, after I saw the toe crack into a building containing friendly troops, you know, that's pretty much I'm done using toes. At least for at least until I can confirm that it won't kill any friendlies. Feueranforderungen kommen. Now, luckily, that tow did not actually kill any friendlies, so that's a plus. So now, I am going to initiate a smoke screen. Now, the, the ground is too wide open to effectively create a smoke screen, so instead of creating a smoke screen to shield my movements, I'm going to drop smoke on the enemy position to blind them. While they're blinded, I'll be able to maneuver the two platoons that are currently in reserve to cross the river, establish a foothold, and then uh, create a corridor for uh, future offensive operations on the north side of the river. Now I'm just quickly rallying the platoons together. The Gaber Yager will cross first, followed by the Pioneers. The reason being that the Alpine troops have, uh, well, they have more firepower, they have Panzerfaust, and there's more of them in a platoon. So they're better for the initial, uh, you know, sort of push through the main effort. And arriving on station is a tornado with laser guided ordnance. Stand by for catch request. I'm going to use the tornado to drop a laser guided bomb in, um, Roger and in the second IP. story of a civilian apartment complex far to the north there was a dishka in that building firing in my position a while ago and I fear that it's sighted for the bridge and will probably cause massive casualties if I try to cross and I also am not going to be dropping smoke on it because I don't have the amount of guns necessary to do so so it needs to be suppressed or destroyed I'm going to use the tornadoes to do so Syrians are still shifting around oh, yeah, forces. Um, now, this bridge is this bridge crossing is going to be very I'm treacherous. Um, it's horrible. You know, it's they probably have multiple heavy machine guns sighted for the bridge. I tend to, I mean, I don't intend, but I expect to get and to receive heavy casualties. It's also possible that the bridge is mined or has IEDs on it, and that's also an important, an important uh, aspect of why I'm calling it a smoke screen because I don't want any trigger men to be able to see the bridge and blow it when I'm crossing. The key to this movement is going to be speed. My forces need to quickly run through and over the bridge and then occupy the buildings on the other side. If they delay or if they stop you know, mid movement, then they're going to take heavy casualties or possibly be destroyed. Playoff talk bandits, end it. And 
the smoke screen isn't complete yet, but I'm forcing my troops across the bridge now because I just spotted a Syrian spotting round landing by my position. They're probably zeroing, zeroing in on the assembly area, and it's likely that if I don't get those guys out of there quickly, I will take heavy casualties. So I, there are two options. I can delay, I can run into cover on my side of the river, or I can push through the assault and reach the other side of the river. And I'm going to choose the latter because I can't recreate the smoke screen. Even though that it's incomplete and it hasn't, you know, had enough time to fully uh, um, obscure the enemy, I don't have the luxury of creating a smoke screen like this, so I'm going to just try my best. And also, the laser guided bomb hasn't arrived yet, and as I suspected, that Dishka opens fire on my forces and kills two soldiers. I'm going to try to suppress it, um, but, you know, these Overwatch elements are also needed to suppress the other more close infantry contacts. RPGs. That was definitely an RPG-29. This is one aspect of shock work which I find highly unrealistic, and that is that if these guys were real soldiers, they would never stop during something like this. They would run through. Even if you're getting RPG fire, you would never run back from a kill zone. And that's what one of those sections just did. It. They, took, they got hit by the RPG and they just ran back, which is... I'm sorry, but even the most ill-disciplined soldiers know to get out of the kill zone. I mean, it's all about getting, you have to get out of the kill zone as quickly as possible. Don't stop when you're doing an assault. Just run. You know, get, get, to the, get to the end state. Out of the window, you know, get out of the open. But no, that that doesn't happen to Jock Boys. Two later, just said, "All right, well, you're deciding to run the op. You're deciding to run, you know, further into the kill zone. Oh, uh, whatever. Just, you know, die. I don't care." By the way, it's a shame that uh, there's no little. Shock for us because I think this mission would, would uh, definitely be cool if it was sort of like that uh, one scene of Band of Brothers when they had to cross the river on those little dinghy boats on the um, you know, on that little line. These went off. So that's a plus. Two out of the three sections is still sort of, you know, hanging out in the kill zone. I keep yelling at them to get out of the open and get into the buildings, but they just continue to 
they continue to panic. Uh, and here's a major issue I didn't, I didn't really uh, prepare for. The buildings that are in the front here are not connected to the buildings in the back. So in order to occupy the buildings that are towards the enemy, I'm going to have to uh, run out in the open again. Stand by for cash and I'm going to redirect the tornado to drop a LGB on the on a section of uh, special forces that are firing at my maneuvering forces. Destroy that tower that has an RPG team in it. Now, that that building, the governor's office, um, I'm restricted from destroying that building. So this is going to be a very surgical fire mission. I'm not going to I'm not going to deliver too much firepower onto that tower. I don't want to destroy the entire building, just the tower area. So, this platoon here is almost completely out of ammo. And again, that's one of the uh, disadvantages of light infantry. Once they, once they get deployed, they're basically out of supply until the rest of the forces catch up with them. Here, here, the uh, Syrians doing some shelling of my position still. I'm tempted at this point to try to bring the weasels up onto the highway. Roger, your route to IP. It's very tempting. So I lost four men crossing the bridge. Well, I was expecting to lose a few, but not four. But I still crossed the bridge. I now have a foot all, so I guess that's worth it. Now, the moment of truth. I'm going to try to probe with one of these weasels. The worst that could happen is that I lose the weasel. Justifiable risk because. If I do manage to get the weasel out there, then you know I'll, I'll have some very powerful direct fire support. So 
Now, I'm not going to be so daring as to attempt to cross the bridge, but I still suspect that there's an IED in the center of it. But from this position, the reasons can provide some fire support onto the buildings that are in the uh, furthest northern extent of the area of operations. And here, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to get this platoon to fully occupy the building that they're in. Um, unfortunately, as I was saying before, there's no way to get to these, uh, get to those other sections of the building other than running along the roof or running through the road. And I'm going to need to do that before I can move those pioneers up, otherwise I won't be able to support them properly. So, no matter what the case is going to happen, I'm going to have to either I'm have to expose myself to fire in order to Cheap proper overwatch. This mission is also slightly reminiscent of, of the ben, or Veneration Kill. Um, Inbound to attack, 30 seconds out. The scene where they're across the river and taking fire while being sort of sporadically ordered. And then they follow the regimental combat team into the city and see some heavy combat. And we need to get the bananas on the ground and reset. Ash 1 is in the park. Roger. Cleared hot. Syrians that were overwatching the road. Hopefully that will make it slightly easier to cross with the pioneers. An important note is that I'm not going to blaze the trail when I'm across with the pioneers. I'm going to take the exact same vector that I took. Because it could be pressure on IED. No pressure on IED. So I'm going to proceed along the left lip of the bridge and uh, try to remain in the exact same footsteps as the person that's already crossed. So, here's a bug of the mission. There's a door um, on the north side of this building, but I cannot access it. See right there? Yeah. I wanted to access that door and run to the north side of the building, but it's not going to let me, so I'm going to have to run completely around in order to access the other part of the building. Now, what I should have done, and this is, you know, hindsight is 2020, I should have sent across the pioneers first, and then they could have blown through the building and, you know, achieved overwatch that way without exposing themselves to fire from outside of the building. But then again, the pioneers have less firepower, so who knows how it would have went. Ah! As expected, fire. regular headquarters across the street the firefight begins.
Now it's time for the pioneers to cross. Well, speaking of that door that doesn't work, uh, surprisingly enough, we're going to see that even after I blow through the wall uh, with these pioneers, I still cannot exit through the north side of the building. So this is the most dangerous portion of the entire mission because I'm running these pioneers across the bridge without any idea where the enemy is and without any smoke screen. So if there's a heavy machine gun in one of these buildings, it could just do like a five or eight round burst and kill, you know, many of the pioneers. So what I what I spot here is I spot a um, an SBG nine team. Doesn't look like the SBG's there, but uh, looks like the crew is. They're in the basement of uh, this building here. We can fire a tow into that building. Oh, yeah. And check the fire of that auto cannon before it accidentally lights up my maneuvering pioneers. Next phase of this operation is going to be securing the buildings that are adjacent to the bridge and establishing a battle position around the bridge, establishing 360 degree security. So I'm just going to need to go through all of these buildings and clear them floor by floor. I'm going to use the pioneers and I'm going to use their charges to blow through floors which I suspect have enemy in them. So here we see that issue with the uh, northern wall that blew the wall apart and I still can't exit through that wall. Very, very annoying. And as a result, the pioneers take a casualty. Well. I guess uh, the platoon leader can write that note to uh, some poor mother. Yeah, we couldn't. Your son died because uh, we couldn't walk through a wall that had been blown up. I'm still thinking it's rapid fire from that SPG. Here I order a target light command. So these are shown to be using the 3 Unfortunately, it ignores that command and fires a tow anyway. It's a good thing that it didn't crash into the building and um, kill half of my platoon that was there. Syrians on the south side of the river. It's like they want to hang on to the city or something.
track. <laughs> this, uh, um, well, I'll pan through it in a second. At this point, at this point in the game, I didn't realize that it was coming, but, uh, yeah, there's a tank materializes out of nowhere, T-55. Sort of angry at myself for firing that Panzerfaust into that uh, building across the street uh, to kill that enemy headquarters. I think, I think the forces on the north side of the river only have a, a single Panzerfaust at this point. Now I see a 55 in the northeast uh, section of the river. It's currently defilated, I can't engage with the weasels. Uh, the grenade launcher on the rooftop is engaging me right now. And now I'm frantically checking to see who has a Panzerfaust. destroyed by a Panzerfaust. I love that weapon. It's so much better than the AT-4. It's amazing. It really makes you wonder why the, the United States Armed Forces is still using the M136 when the Panzerfaust exists and it's so much better. Um, okay, so here we see a minor victory for myself. I took pretty heavy casualties, and here we see there's an ID in the middle of the bridge. I was expecting there to be actually a lot more forces um, remaining in the north side of the river, but there's only a battle two miners right now. I guess I killed more of them than I, than I thought I did when they were maneuvering. And the end of the campaign, I win the campaign with a total victory. Well, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know, um, let me know how you enjoyed these videos. These videos. These videos. These videos.